I am approaching Lesson 10 of Numbers with a great deal of fear, I believe, because look what we are dealing with again. The glory of the Lord, the cloud and the fire that surrounded the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle, Shekinah the cloud of glory that accompanies these people, the demand for utter holiness for God is with us. How can we proceed without trembling? On our diagram then, we have the Ark of the Covenant central now to the Shekinah. God with us. And uh, around it are two dark lines. For these people now are pledged to holiness. And if they go beyond the commandments of God, the law, the covenant made by Moses in blood, with them on the mountain. If they go beyond that or outside of that, they are under the ban, harem. And outside of this law, there is only death and punishment, a descent into Sheol. Well, you and I would all be destined to ultimate death without what Jesus did. And that is still in the promise of a new covenant. This is the old covenant. God is forming a people upon which to build. If you look carefully then at your diagram, you'll see two little dotted lines, one moving up, the other moving down. Above the upper uh, scoop shape is the law, the covenant, Moses and Aaron. Aaron as the progenitor and beginning of priesthood. They are separate from the people, although both priest and people are to be holy as God is holy the chilling demands of the covenant. Below that other uh, shape that turns down are the people. And they are to remember and be aware of, of the demands of the covenant. And ministering out of them, with an arrow going up, are the Levites. The tribe of Levi is now set apart. It's actually explained as a wave offering. The people are offering the Levites to God, and they will have a very special role. They they are not priests, but they will serve the priests. All along, we are aware of the need for cleanliness and obedience, not only of the Levites who have a special role, but of all the people. They are to be pure before God, as we saw in our last lesson. And Israel is set apart from all others by these, by this no man's land of harem. They are not to go outside of the law. So now we have a tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, we have priests and Levites, and a people in the wilderness ready to begin a journey that God will lead them to a new land. This is all part of Revelation We would not know it except that it's been revealed to us in the Holy Bible. 
So the people begin their journey in chapters 9 and 10. And then we have a little diagram on the side that shows how the people are organized for this journey. In the center, in the very center, is the tabernacle holding the ark with the Ten Commandments. It is the center of their life. It is the center of God's revelation. And they are to be careful of every handling of the elements of the ark and the tabernacle. To the east of the ark resides Moses, Aaron, and the priesthood. They are the members of the tribe of Levi. They are Levites. Along with the actual work of Levites, which is beyond priesthood, and we have three sub-tribes, the Merari, Gershon, and Kohath, who are given very special handling of the elements of the tabernacle. And they must be carefully observed on pain of death. They are the only ones that can handle these very sacred material things. Then to the east of Moses and Aaron, very interestingly, is the main tribe of Judah, accompanied by Issachar and Zebulun. The significance of Judah being at the head will only come to our understanding as time goes on, but it begins here. They will be the lead-off tribe as this family of God moves according to the glory of the Lord over the Ark of the Covenant that will lead them on. That is to the east. To the north is the tribe of Dan in their encampment with two sub-tribes of Asher and Naphtali. Now, interestingly enough, to the east, to the north, and to the south where there is Reuben, Simeon, and Gad encamped, these are all the descendants of the woman Leah or Leah's maid Zilpah. So she, they, uh, Leah is the mother of these tribes. To the west is Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, the tribes whose mother is Rachel. So there is some significance in the order by their mothers. This is the um, the configuration then of how the tribes will set out when they when the Shekinah over the tabernacle moves and they are to follow. This will be the order of journey. The tribes of 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 uh, Levi, the Merari, Gershon, and Kohath, will go ahead with the ark and the tabernacle to set it up at the next location that God will point out. This is um, all a very significant step toward the fulfillment of God's promises. However, despite all of the precautions about holiness, there are troubles. There is disobedience. There is rebellion. Aaron and Miriam are the first to ask Moses why he is so prominent. They uh, have a question. You know, we too have gifts from the Holy, from Holy God. Um, how come you seem so predominant over us? Miriam especially considers herself a prophetess. Well, there has to be an answer to that. And we see that that is 
um, answered by punishment. Aaron gets off more lightly than Miriam because for women to start this disobedience may upset everything for a while. So she must be shown that although she has prophetic gifts, they are not in the order of the authority given to Moses. Then there are other rebellious people. There are lay people who don't see why they need priests. That sounds rather modern. And the the, um, Dothanites are, are punished. There are Levites who don't see why they can't be priests. And they are punished. We must keep the people in obedience in order for the fulfillment of the covenant to take place. Among the people, there is constant distrust and presumption, and there are plagues to punish. This is the beginning of the journey of the people, and it is something that we will see is fulfilled in time to come.